How's it going guys? Coffee here. Today I wanted to go over my recommendation for how to league start on a SSF Gemma 2 um, and my recommendation for how about uh, going through the campaign and leveling on her. Um, with her you do start out with the Ice Lance's skill and this is what I recommend you actually use all the way through maps pretty much until you um, get your full kind of affliction effect gear. Um, that will at that point will be when you'll actually be able to use Frost Terra alone. So Ice Lances has some unique effects here where it actually deals additional damage to enemies that are on a Frost Terra. Um, so because of that, uh, you can get quite a bit of extra damage out of this. Um, so you're getting an additional 40% damage against enemies that are on a Frost Terra, as well as you're getting all the additional damage from the Frost Terra itself. So because of that, you do start with Ice Lances when you... Um, Again, as you start off, you'll get your Frost Terra, maybe around level 10 or 15, something like that. Um, I would equip it already, basically already at that point, just because it's going to give you a lot of extra damage. You'll get your um, multiple projectiles right away on Ice Lances, and then you basically just put on whatever supports you can get. Um, you're going to push this up. You're going to get to a point where you'll be able to push Ice Lances to um, a 5 link, as well as Frost Terra to a 5 link. Um, pretty much right away as soon as you get your omniscient prototype um, early on while you're leveling during when you are doing your treasure troves um, as I recommended with the Erica um, I recommend doing each of the treasure troves until you get um, anywhere you know eight levels or so above them um, if you have like anthem and XP balance pets you can do these a little bit longer on like the last treasure trove of 54 but pretty much each of the treasure troves when you look at them um, some of the base items that you are looking for to get right away, Lonesome and um, Omniscient Prototype, you're looking to get out of the first treasure trove if you can. Out of the second treasure trove, you're looking to get your Spring Resurrections. Um, these don't come out of the first one. They do come out of the second one, if I recall correctly. Uh, let's go ahead and look over these and make sure we're seeing the right things here. So in regards to the gear, so the first treasure trove you see in um, Chapter 1... Um, you're not even looking for your Lonesome Rings. You're pretty much just looking for Omniscient Prototype if you can get it. Um, a Lonesome Ring if you can get it. Or just like Glorious Journey and Rock Lizard Skull. Early on you're going to be using um, you're going to be using Life um, rather than Energy Shield. That comes a little bit later. But as you get into the second Treasure Trove. Which I don't even think that's the second one yet. The second one's over here. Um, 16. So from here you can get Photophobia. Which is nice because this saves you a skill point here. Um, as well as Lonesome and, on, and Omniscient Prototype. Those are the mains when you're looking for. Um, Grace Boots can be helpful early on as well, just because they're going to give you a nice amount of movement speed, um, as well as some extra damage. Um, starting in the um, one after that, it might be a little bit later here, um, where you can get... Oh, did they? I guess Spring Resurrection. I think maybe they removed it entirely. I don't recall now. Um, yeah, so pretty much you're going to be just looking for whatever... Um, Wands you can get. If you can't get uh, your Spring Resurrection as a guaranteed drop from your Treasure Troves, then you can just continue to basically look for wands. I will have them pointed out in the filter um, so you can look for wands or staves that are going to give you solid drops. Um, in the end game, you are going to want to use wands overall um, with the Affliction Effect and all the things for a pure Frost Terra build. But leveling up, you're just looking for, again, levels to spells, levels to cold damage, or just base spell damage, period, things like that. Um, as you get into these treasure troves in the mid-40s is when you're going to be start looking for your Surging Inspiration prototype, as well as your Corrupted Marrow, um, as you start leaning into your uh, Terra damage as well. Um, and then uh, when you do get to the Nether Realm, you will want to ensure that you are running your God of Might content um, for your chance to get your Kingly Armor which will basically be the second piece you want um, to fully transition into the Pure Frost Terra version of the build. So while you are leveling, um, you will end up wanting to take Beacon right away. Um, if you do get a Photophobia necklace very early, then you can swap this out and you will want to be running it over to Winter um, instead of a Beacon. And then um, for everything else, you're still just going to be running Insight here just because you want the additional spell damage. And then you will be putting your points into Arcanist um, secondly, all the, going all the way up to Extreme Coldness. And then you'll just do Psychic for your last tree. 
Um, this isn't as important because this is all going to be mainly for your damage over time, which you're not going to be fully leaning into your damage over time uh, damage as much until you basically get to um, maps pretty much it. Uh, early on, your ice lances are going to be doing like 90% of your damage, and then it will slowly start creeping down to only being like 80 to 70 to 50% of your damage. And at some point, you'll be better off just using the Frost Terra. But the kit for Gemma 2 with her hero traits are designed very, very well um, to kind of give you a nice balance for what you're going to get out of that, especially with the addition of the Heart of Snow uh, prototype here. Um, it does remove the necessity for getting or running the um, cold pulse interval as early on um, when you are first um, running through maps though i do recommend the um, still running frigid infusion here just because you are going to be getting your guaranteed uh, freeze on things right away because of frostbitten so this kind of does the same thing as what the top trait does on gemma 2 so you don't need to run that anymore as you did two leagues ago um, and then for your slates um, we're not even going to go over slates because this is SSF. You're not really going to get those. Um, you're pretty much just running any slate you can get. And especially for a T7 Traveler event, you're just kind of rushing through and you're not trying to get that. Other um, uniques to look for while you're leveling. Again, Spring Resurrections are very, very helpful for survivability. Um, and the Marksman's Bracers are really, really nice as well. Just because um, they are um, going to give you some additional damage um, as well as some additional jumps. So uh, Ice Lances um, just has those extra jumps. Um, it doesn't get extra damage for each jump like uh, Chain Lightning does, but it's still really, really nice just for clear um, and other things like that. So outside of your damaging skills, I recommend running for start. Early on, this will just be your compound source. Um, and then you do want to be running Biting Cold here. And you can run either Frigid Transmission or um, Blink. It's personal preference. Um, Frigid Transmission should be getting the resets for you, um, because of all the freezing you're going to be doing on everything, um, but Blink has a lower base cooldown by itself. Um, you can be running Energy Fortress here, or you can just run this as a, um, elemental, um, amplification here if you just want more damage and less defenses. So early on, before you get, um, before you move over to Energy Shield when you're running on Pure Life, you can just run this on Elemental Amplification instead. Um... Early on, you'll want to just be running Elemental Amplification instead of Deep Pain. So I would recommend running this basically as a start here. And if you, I would still just run Energy Fortress, honestly, even if you're not fully yes yet. Um, just because it's going to give you a nice uh, defensive layer here. And then again, once you actually swap over to the Pure Terra build, it's where you'll swap Elemental Amplification off and um, put it onto your, um, turn it into Deep Pain. The last thing is Ice Imbue. This does help with just some um, explosions to basically help with clear. It's not really necessary, but if you watched my um, treasure trove farming build on this, I did level this character up to like 95 extremely quickly, just using kind of some explosions with um, lots of running around quickly and basically blowing up the whole screen. So, um, yeah, especially once you get into maps, again, you'll be looking for Affliction Effect gear. Um, this is your kind of end game stuff that you're kind of looking for. Not really end game, but kind of the gear that you're leaning towards as you start pushing towards T7 is getting affliction on everything, levels to um, cold skills on everything, um, and then some additional damage to frozen enemies. And if you are interested in the pushing Gemma further, I do have other videos on that as well. But this is just basically to get people through the campaign as well as kind of get them in a place or a direction to where they will basically have a character that will be capable of doing the um, T7 basically traveler kill when they need to. So uh, this gear right now that I have on, I'm not going to have any res just because I'm wearing the base gear uh, really, but let's just kind of showcase what it looks like still here. Um, doing this on a, um, a character in a T7 map. As you see, you're still getting the big, really big chain explosions on everything. Um, the character is still going to be really, really strong, even with these like base unique items here. And just Cold Pulse alone is doing a lot of the carrying of the basically killing everything on the screen or as you're running. So Gemma 2 is still really, really strong, especially for this early farming stuff. Um, this gear is nothing crazy 
right? Um, I'm not even really using my Frost Terra here for mapping. You don't necessarily need to do it. It's just you end up doing it on um, bosses just because the extra damage is very helpful. So, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. And other than that, see you in the next one.